Good morning. So I wanted to share, for those who don't know, um, about how I got on government assistance in the first place, why, and why I'm going to make another attempt at getting off of it. I've made several attempts in the past. I've had limited success. Um, and I just wanted to share a recap for people who haven't known me up until now and are just kind of wondering what the whole gist of this is. Forgive me if I make breakfast while I'm doing this. My life is very busy and I have to take advantage of every opportunity. You didn't see that. So, um, I became chronically ill at age 13 and then at age 16, I became very, very, very sick. I never really figured out what it was. Um, I was not just physically sick, as in um, my body couldn't do much, but also my brain couldn't do much. Um, I was almost completely reliant on a caregiver um, to be on call 24-7. Um, it was really bad. It was really severe. And no one really found the answers to it. I did a lot of, of healing work in a lot of different areas and ways. And around, I want to say age 23-ish maybe, a little bit fuzzy, um, but I started to slowly come out of it. I'm now 32, 33. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, Life has been a lot. Um, anyway, born in 1989, so whatever date that is. Um, and so it's been a really long journey. Um, and my parents did not want to, did not want me to apply initially. Um, I was eligible for SSI, which is Supplemental Security Income. And it's different than SSDI, which is um, disability income, because I had never worked as an adult, so I was not eligible for SSDI. SSI is very different. Um, there's a lot of rules that prevent you from saving money, and um, and it was very difficult to get on. So it took. Uh, my parents paid for a lot of my medical treatments until they couldn't anymore. And then, I want to say around age 20, they finally were willing to help me apply. I couldn't apply on my own because I was too sick. And they actually had to apply completely on my behalf. And it took multiple appeals and I think a couple years before I was um, actually approved. And so, on SSI, um, the maximum I could receive was 733 a month. The number changed every year, but that's the number that I remember. And um, I was never allowed to have my total accounts go over $2,000, which meant, you know, by the time the money hit my account, I had to be below like the 1,260 something mark in order to make sure the money coming in didn't put me over the 2000. So that really limited any savings that I could have. And also SSI is intentionally not enough for someone to live on, which is very cruel in my opinion, to take someone who officially is not able to work and say, here, this isn't enough to live on, but if you earn any money, this amount will go down. In fact, I had friends, um, later on when I was living on the streets, which I'll get to that, but I had, I had friends who would, like a friend would send me a $500 check, and I'm by law required to report this. And so I would report it, and then next month's SSI um, deposit would be $233 instead of $733 because I received $500. I had to tell my friends, stop helping me because you're not actually improving my situation at all. You're just saving the government a little bit of money. And that made them pretty mad, understandably. But 
I didn't know what else to do. Um, you know, people suggested you can get around it with gift cards and, and things like that. And it's, I'm such a rule follower and that rubbed me really the wrong way. You know, you hear about people getting around rules in order to get more benefits and that sounds so wrong and so bad. And yet it was ridiculous what was going on. And so I, my first thing that I was on was SSI. I wasn't on any other programs at the time, just the SSI. And it was not enough to live on. And eventually I needed a different living situation than living with my parents. And I couldn't live with friends. I couldn't do roommates because I reacted really severely to fragrances and products. Like really severely, my airways would close. And like everyone uses products with fragrance. <laughs> and so um, I couldn't do that. And I was like, the only way to improve my situation that I could see was to get go to the streets. And my friends, I had some online friends, they pulled together a loan for me to get a vehicle. And I went onto the streets with my SSI because I couldn't afford rent. I got on the, I won the lottery to get on the wait list for housing that was about three years out. And people said I was really lucky to, you know, you got on the wait list, you know, to have housing in a few years. Like, wow, lucky you. That's how bad it is. So I didn't really ever actually get the housing, but I was on the wait list and that was like really big deal. So um, I got approved to have a caregiver. That was actually before I moved out of the house. I was approved for the maximum number of hours because I was so sick. And I had multiple terrible experiences with the caregivers. And um, then when I moved out, they said, you don't have a house, so you don't get a caregiver. They said, you have to have real housing before you get a caregiver. And that was really hard. So I was eligible for that government program, but I couldn't benefit from it. And I was so sick that there were a lot of days that I still couldn't, couldn't walk a block. There were some days I couldn't leave my van at all. And the only way I survived was making friends really fast <laughs> and calling them being like, hey, I need help. I can't open my water bottles and I need to drink water because it's a hot day and I'm stuck in my car. Can you help me? Or I just puked and pooped all over my van and I, I can't get out of bed. I'm so sick. Are you willing to help? That's, that's how I started was I didn't have a caregiver because this um, government program had failed me. I didn't have enough money to rent even the cheapest apartment that was also had access to stores and everything. And I didn't know fully about food stamps yet. Um, so it was rough. And um, the money coming in did make it possible to buy some food and it made it possible to pay for my van breaking down which i did very often and actually i would there was two different months that the last couple weeks i just lived off of snacks like a few granola bars and stuff because um my van needed work in order to to run and um i just i was like okay either i can get away from people trying to break into my van, which happened very frequently in Seattle, or I can eat. And I chose safety over eating. So this was a very dire situation. Um, I, I paint this picture because actually during this time, I had an experience that showed me what other people view welfare as. Um, I need to remember to keep making breakfast, but, um, so I was, I was chatting with this guy and he was like, you know, he was asking me what I did for work and I was like, I'm too disabled to work. Um, and he asked me if I, if I'd get 
you know, any government benefits. And I'm like, yeah, I'm on some of that. And he was like, oh good, I've been trying to get on that for years. It's really hard to get on it. I'm like, yeah, I tried for a few years too. And he was like, yeah, you know, some people are the nine to five type and you know, I'm just not the working type. You know, that's just not a good fit for me. And my jaw kind of dropped <laughs> because that's never been my approach at all. I wanted to work. I wanted to do anything I could do. I hated this feeling of not being, a, hang on, oh, oops, back. Nope, I was just hearing things. I hated this feeling of not being capable of doing anything to better my situation. Um, and it just, I felt like I was trapped. And so to encounter someone who's just like, yeah, I just, I just don't really feel like working, so I, I wanna get on welfare, I'm really trying. And he thought that we were like, like-minded in that regard. Like, I just about puked. Like, that is not me at all. And I have met so many people who are on benefits that are like me and they're just like, I wish I could work. I wanna work. Um, so, I'm multitasking here. So, that's why I, I share just how severe it was. And um, I, I remember the first time I made like just a couple dollars with, uh, um, it was this app thing that you get paid to, to view ads and I was so excited about it and I earned two dollars and I, I called up the social security place because you're supposed to report all income, right? And I was like, my income has changed. And they're like, they're like, oh, really? Okay, um, how much is it? Who are you working for? And I'm like, I, I don't know. It's this kind of shady the ad viewing thing. And they're like, all right, so how much have you earned? How much are you earning per month? And I'm like, <coughs> I'm like, well, I've earned $2 so far. And there was like silence at the other end of the line for a bit. I think they were trying to figure out if I was pranking them. And they were like, call us when you've earned at least 20 bucks. And I was like, oh, okay. You, you sure you don't want to know about the $2? <laughs> they were very burned out by it. And honestly, in the moment, I sincerely had no idea that why that was um, not quite the right thing to do in their eyes. So I wanted to earn money. I wanted to get off of this. I have always wanted to get off of it. Um, so at one point people started telling me about other government programs that could give me more of a leg up. You know, SSI is not designed to be enough to live on, but there is, um, medical benefits that I wasn't getting. There was, um, there was, food stamps, also known as SNAP EBT, properly known as SNAP EBT, but most people just say food stamps still. And there was free phone thing. And I was like, great, this is the way to make life work. I will put in the work to do this. And it is work to apply for these things. So I got the free phone and I was just like, oh, this is gonna change so much. Not to have a monthly bill, Look at all the medical stuff I could pay for with that, all the food I could pay for with that, all the gas I could buy, like I could actually go places to dump my trash because that was one of the most difficult things is driving half an hour or more just to be able to dump my trash because they locked the dumpsters and threatened you with fines if you dumped your trash at a park. Um, and so I was like, this is gonna be great. I applied for the free phone and I got it and they limit the number of minutes you can have on it. And um, the problem is the phone didn't have enough minutes for me to apply for any other programs. So the free phone was great, except if I was on hold for a few hours, a couple times a month, I would run out of minutes and I wouldn't have a phone. So for no, people who haven't 
done a lot of these before. So with food stamps, you have to do an application, but you also have to do an interview. The interview is between certain hours of the day, and it is very common to be on hold, listening to hold music for a couple hours, and then the system hangs up on you. Can you call it back? You can do the same thing. Sometimes I would do that for the entire window. And the first time I applied for food stamps, I actually didn't manage to get on it just because I ran out of phone minutes and I couldn't manage to find another phone that I could use, like borrowing someone's phone. Um, I was afraid that my current friends, a lot of them did not know that I was homeless at the time. I was afraid that they would that they would judge me and, and look down on me and not be friends with me anymore. And those are my survival resources. So, but I did eventually get on food stamps. So I was on SSI and then I did the free phone on top of the SSI and I finally did get on food stamps. Um, took a few years though. Okay, I just got a text from them that Loki's asleep. So when Loki comes, I'm gonna have to end this video and we'll just have to do a part two or whatnot. Um, food stamps was not enough um, for me to, to pay for all of my groceries. So I was still struggling with that. And someone recommended the food bank. And I was like, great. This is my solution. This is gonna make things work. Like each time I learned about a new program that I was eligible for, I was like, oh, this is it. This is it, I'm gonna be okay. And I went to the food bank. I had never been to a food bank before. And I go there and I, you know, the, the front desk people are like, hi, are you new here? Can we help you? Oh, I'm just gonna have to do a part two later.